uh, it uh, starts by reading a quote uh, of what has been said in the uh, course and then asks about it. So the quote is like this. Uh, you have said in IBS 201, hence you can consider ilm of God as a quality of essence or a quality of action. If you consider it as a quality of essence, it's eternal. But if you consider it as a quality of action, then the ma'loom, what is known, must exist so that this ilm can be abstracted from the relation that is between God and that subject. This relation has two sides, and one side comes in a certain time and space. So the knowledge comes in a certain time and space without God being changed or subject to the changes that happen to the other side. It's only the relation which is changing. Therefore, you have to remember there are two ways of thinking of God's knowledge. The question is, are you meaning that the action is not the essential is not an essential part to Allah and that it happens uh, due to his power to will something into being? Like, for example, myself, he has all knowledge of me. However, when he wills for me to come into existence, he wills it. And, and that produces the action of me coming into existence. Sorry, I didn't get the action of me. So there's the action. So they're saying that the question is basically that uh, uh, God's actions are not essential to Him. Okay. And they just happen. Yeah, that part is clear. When he, when he, yes, and then so for example, so like for myself, he has all he has knowledge of. Uh, let's say a person he has knowledge of that person, eternal knowledge of that person. However, when he wills for that person to come into existence, he wills it at a point in time, and that produces the action or the reality of me coming into existence. They want to confirm if they got the right understanding. Yeah, whenever he wills, he makes his uh, final decision to create us, he says at the final stage, after completion of all the codes and you know conditions and you know, everything, kun for yakun. so we are there. So when we are there, of course, this is not something that we do to come to existence. He brings us to existence. Then a relation starts between this being and its cause, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This relation that exists between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could not exist before we came into existence. Because one side of the relation, it's just created so before the this side came to existence the relation didn't exist because for relation to exist you need both parties both sides of the relation to exist so depending on what is that relation it's a relation of knowledge so you can say now God knew me if it is a relation then God now created me uh, relation of rest God now gave me rest and sustained me so things like this or for example someone makes toba and God forgave him uh, so before that he was not forgiven at that point is forgiven is it because God has changed God never changes the relation has changed so this is the idea there's a follow-up question to this yes. one which is that um, Which is, and what 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 are your thoughts on Allah's will? Is it essential to Him, or is it not essential to Him? We can have irada as sifat fi'liya. We can have irada as sifat zatiya, uh, like ilm. Irada as sifat fi'liya is not eternal. Irada as sifat zatiya is eternal. Then what is irada as sifat zatiya? It seems it goes to love. It goes to him wanting something. But even love, there is a discussion. And some say maybe love also goes back to his knowledge, to his essential knowledge of what is pleasant or what is compatible with uh, Allah's uh, you know, essence. But uh, just to make it simple, we say erada can be also sefat zat or sefat fil. The next question is uh, about 
which is better? It was said that quality matters more than quantity when it comes to our actions. But an exception was made where a person is in a situation that they must save drowning children. They cannot say that they saved only one child but helped them to go to university, for example. How can we look at this question when it comes to guidance, education of children? If we have the choice between the following two actions, which is better? Number one, to put our efforts in providing an average Islamic education to a great number of youth where the quality of their faith would be average, but many youths would be saved from total misguidance. Or two, to put our efforts in providing an exceptional Islamic education, but to a small number of youth where the quality of faith of the small number of youth is very high, but many other youths would not have access to this and would likely fall into total misguidance. Yeah, this is uh, something that doesn't have single answer. It depends. You have to see what are other people doing, what are the priorities and what are the necessities. Uh, sometimes you have to deal with an urgent case where people make lose their iman so you have to help them first but sometimes you are planning something and you see that you can do two things you can always aim at providing basic or you can for example train some scholars that each of them in future would train lots of people so for sure this is better so you cannot always come up with the same answer and the same solution and it's better that at the same time that we address urgent needs we set up a plan for long-term progress otherwise we would always just dealing with the poor people and you know refugees and this type of things you would never make a school you would never make in you know, a hospital you would never for example make you know university or hose because we have to always deal with urgent needs thank you very much you're welcome uh, perhaps another question so this is in the general uh, question section yes the first, the first one says, Thank you, dear Sheikh. A small cl clarification on the difference between the terms Shahid, Shaheed, Shuhada, and Ishad in the Holy Quran. Can you please tell us the difference? In the Quran, normally, Shahid, Shaheed, or Ashad, or uh, things like that, Shuhada, the plural form means witness witness and the meaning of witness is what we have discussed in aqaid uh, discussion about imam and also in this book lessons on imam and Gulaya. someone that is given the mission of bearing witness about what people of his generation believe or do and also he's a standard bearer for them on the day of judgment allah brings these witnesses and uh, ask them to offer their testimony. This is the main meaning of witness in the Quran. But we also use, especially in our hadith and our, you know, also um, own usage of the term, we use shaheed in the sense of martyrs. Because a martyr is not dead, a martyr is present. He's a witness, he's aware of what we do. Therefore, we use for martyrs also the term shaheed. But in the Quran, when Allah says, uh, or, or for example, all these verses like this. من النبيين والشهداء والصديقين والصالحين all means witness doesn't mean martyrs thank you very much Sheikh. you're welcome so inshallah we leave the other questions for the next webinars we have